Want to start making pottery from home? Then this video is for you. Hi, Marie here from Pottery Crafters. In this video, I'll share how I began making pottery at home to simplify the process for you. My initial setup was modest with basic tools and a small workplace. I'll go through the minimal investment and resources so then you can gradually expand your supplies and equipment as your skills develop. All the supplies and resources mentioned are listed for you in the show notes below. Let's get started with setting up your workspace. When choosing your space, make sure your flooring is non-porous like tile, linoleum, or concrete. Consider factors like electrical outlets, ventilation, and ease of cleaning as pottery making does get messy. I would recommend a strong work table for wedging and slamming your clay around with enough space to create and glaze your pottery. You'll need a surface to wedge on and work with your clay. The surface needs to have some grip to prevent the clay from sliding off or sticking to the surface. The surface also needs to be somewhat absorbent, but not too much, otherwise it'll dry out your clay too fast. I use this 2x4 piece of wood. I have an article on my Pottery Crafters website with seven surfaces for you to choose from. I left the link for you below in the show notes. You won't need a designated area for glazing if you protect the surface with a cover, or you can clear the area where you handle your clay. I use C-clamps to secure my wooden wedging and hand building board. That way I can remove the board when I glaze. This approach helps to conserve space. You will need to start with a storage shelf or cabinet for your clay, glaze, tools, greenware, and bisque pieces. You want at least one wear board to carefully carry your pottery from one area to the next. They come in very handy. If you'd like to make your own wear boards, I have a detailed video on how to make wear boards and all the things that you can use them for. I left the link for you below in the show notes. Now let's go to the basic hand tools you'll need. Most new potters start with this basic tool set. This tool set has most of the essential tools to start making pottery. The wooden modeling tool shapes, carves, and smooths your clay. This comes in very handy. The wooden rib tool is used to refine and shape your work. It creates a smooth surface on both the interior and exterior of your piece. The loop tool is used for carving, shaping, and trimming your clay. The ribbon tool is designed for shaping, cutting, and trimming your clay also. The needle tool is used for scoring, trimming excess clay, adding fine detail, and also used for checking the thickness of your clay. The small sponge is mainly used to smooth and shape clay when hand building and on the pottery wheel. The sponge is great for absorbing excess water and slip, helping to maintain the right moisture level on your clay's surface. This metal scraper bends, making it great for shaping and finishing to give your clay a smooth, even texture. I use this one a lot. It would be quite hard to work with clay without a wire cutter. The wire cutter allows you to cut large and small blocks of clay into small pieces with ease. You'll need a fettling knife. Fettling knife has a thin, flexible blade, making it ideal for cutting and shaping wet and leather-hard clay. And a soft palmer rib. This is great for smoothing out and compressing your clay surface. Its curved surface is perfect for throwing on the wheel and smoothing out any bumps and compressing your clay when hand building. Both buckets and bowls are essential in your pottery studio. You want a few different size bowls for your slip, water, clay scraps, glaze pouring, and brushing. Water buckets are essential for keeping the clay workable when throwing on the wheel. They're also used for cleaning up your work area. I use them to hold dry clay, wet clay, slip, and water. Important tip. 
When working with clay at home, it's important to dispose of your clay water properly because the clay particles will clog your pipes over time. You'll need a sink trap or allow the clay to settle and pour off the extra water and then dry out the clay and reclaim it. I have both an article and a video on how to dispose of your pottery clay water. I left the link for you below in the show notes. You'll need a few rags. Rags are used for wiping excess slip or water from your hands or tools and for drying your pottery wheel and work surfaces. Cleanup sponge is a must-have in your workspace. The damp sponge picks up extra water, glaze, wet clay, and dry clay with ease. I cut my sponges in half to make them easier to work with. Choosing your clay. There are many clays to choose from. The clay that you choose will depend on your firing temperature and the method that you choose to make your pottery. New potters mainly choose earthenware or stoneware because they're easier to work with. Both types are good for experimenting with various styles and techniques. Keep in mind that stoneware is a more durable and high fire clay, while earthenware is a more porous and low fire clay. I have a video and article on choosing your pottery clay that can help you find the best clay for your needs. I left the link for you below in the show notes. Plastic bags are essential for keeping your pottery clay moist and covering your clay to help the clay dry more evenly. You want a plastic storage container with a lid that provides a space for storing clay and to store pieces that you're still working on. You'll need glaze for the pottery you make. The good news is you'll only need a few or even one glaze that you like the most to start with. You can also get under glaze to create designs and cover with a clear glaze. I found a strainer is necessary to remove any clumps or debris from your glaze to ensure a smooth and even application. Whenever I didn't use it, most of the time I would end up with a clump of glaze or something else on my pot. Best to be safe than sorry. It's important to note that you can't use a strainer with any crystal glazes because the crystals will get trapped in the strainer. Most new potters use glaze brushes to apply the glaze. These brushes come in different sizes and shapes, allowing for a good coverage and the ability to create different effects on the pottery surface. I would suggest starting out with a set of soft fan brushes. I like the way they hold the glaze and brush onto the pot and a set of detail brushes for detail work. When working with dry clay and dry glaze, a dust mask is essential. Dry clay and glaze materials produce fine dust particles that if inhaled over time can be harmful to your respiratory system. A dust mask like this will effectively filter out harmful dust particles. A spray bottle is needed in your work area to keep the dust down. A Mr. Spray Pump bottle is an excellent choice because it emits a fine, gentle mist, lightly misting the surface. It's also perfect for moisturizing clay more evenly without saturating it, which is great for hand building and decorating. Will you be hand building or wheel throwing? Or maybe both? If you choose hand building, you can start creating immediately with techniques like pinch pots, coil building, and slab construction. If you choose to make pinch pots, then no further equipment is involved, and you can start making your pottery right away. Pinching starts with a ball of clay, forming shapes by pinching and turning the clay. Coiling involves rolling out long strips of clay and stacking them to create forms. If you choose to coil, you can start making coil pots with no further equipment. You can hit the like button anytime during this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to get notified when a new video comes out. If you'd like to add any equipment to help make your coils, you can get a handheld clay extruder. A clay extruder is a valuable tool in making clay coil pots. By using an extruder, you can quickly produce long, even strands of clay that are the same thickness throughout. 
The extruder also reduces the time of hand rolling coils, making the pot making process more efficient. If you choose to slab build, I would recommend getting a rolling pin and quarter inch thick rulers to flatten the clay into even sheets. This ensures a consistent thickness throughout. If you love slab building and know it's the main way that you want to create things with clay, then I would suggest getting a slab roller. It flattens the clay into even sheets very quickly and easily. And you can start out small with the tabletop slab roller. Then if you have space and it's in your budget, you can get the standalone slab roller. If you're interested in shaping clay on the pottery wheel, then you'll need a pottery wheel in your studio. The good news is there are many types of pottery wheels to choose from. If you're not sure that wheel throwing would be the main way that you want to create pottery, you can start out with a budget-friendly pottery wheel forming machine. If you love throwing on the wheel and know it's the main way that you want to create pottery, but you don't have the space or the budget for the freestanding wheel, you can start with the Speedball Artista Pottery Wheel. I knew I wanted a well-built standalone pottery wheel, so I bought the Brent model CXC Pottery Wheel and never looked back. A banding wheel is a helpful piece of equipment to have in your studio. It's mainly used in hand building and decorating and assists in accessing all sides of your work without needing to manually reposition. Its steady rotation gives you a uniform application, making it easier to create and design pieces. There are several different banding wheels to choose from. Both work really well, but my favorite is the Nidec. Kilns are required to fire your pottery. When you plan on buying your kiln, I have a buyer's guide for home kilns that go through six kilns from an 8 by 6 inch kiln for smaller pieces of pottery to a 9.9 .9 square foot kiln if you plan on making larger pieces of pottery. If you don't have a kiln yet, you do have alternatives. You can rent a kiln space from a pottery studio, community kiln, or a fellow potter. You can join a local pottery group that may provide kiln space. Online forums and social media groups are also great places to seek support. Pit firing and raku firing are another alternative to firing pottery. Keep in mind that your clay will not vitrify when pit firing or raku firing. For those without a kiln or can't find any access to a kiln, there is another alternative. You can use air dry clay. Air dry clay works well when hand building and you can also use it on the pottery wheel. And instead of glazing, you can use acrylic paint and a sealer. Keep in mind that air dried clay, acrylic paints, and sealers are not food safe. There you have it. Everything you need to start making pottery at home now and grow as you go. You watching helps me to make more videos like this one. Now head on over to my 21 hand building tips or my 21 brush glazing tips. If you do, I get to play with more clay. Let's stay dirty.